Welcome back to another car show. We're back here with the Ranchero. This is the video where we're gonna do the cost breakdown. We wanna kinda of show what the car costed one and two, so you can take a little bit of the information we give you to kinda of figure out how much your car would cost. This whole project started with the, was buying the actual car itself. I had been looking for an old car that I could daily drive. I was looking at older Rancheros and I ended up finding this one, which is a 69 instead of the 66s and 65s and such I've been looking at. I really, really ended up liking the long, big body style of this car and not the smaller, more nimble ones of the past. I found this car in Facebook Marketplace and it was listed for $5,200. Me and Ben went and looked at it because I was really excited to go see it. Saw that the car was running-ish, like I get it to sputter over, it popped out the carburetor and I actually burnt my hair off in the process. It, it looked promising basically. The car looked really promising to get running and driving and everything like that. So it seemed that this was a really good car for me to pick. I ended up talking the guy down uh, from a 5200 number to 4700. I think it had been on the market for a long time and I don't think that he really was getting any buyers from it. You know, there wasn't a lot of people who were gonna buy this car. So I ended up offering the guy 4700 for it. And that was the main cost of the car. The next day, we, me and Ben went and got a U-Haul and a trailer to then tow the car back to LA. The car was, I think about 200 miles away. So it's cost a little bit of money. Uh, I ended up spending about $210.05 on that U-Haul. When the car got back, we immediately got to work. Uh, I put a new battery, a fuel filter, a bunch of tune-up parts, spark plugs, fuel lines. I put gas in the car. It was honestly, I took a, I bought a lot of stuff right at the beginning just to get it. And we also bought a battery. That total came out from AutoZone at $242.08. So right off the bat, I had already spent well over $400 just on parts alone, just trying to get this thing running the first time. And that's when everything kind of went to shit. Me and Ben, using those parts I had bought, got the car started and it didn't sound very good. Uh, the engine was blown. Uh, it was knocking really bad and uh, it just it sucked. It really just sucked. So because at this point we kind of knew that we were screwed in that way, uh, it was time to get a new engine. The engine ended up cost me $800, which is really good. I was originally going to rebuild the engine, but just because of timing and at the time, COVID was at peak like part shortage. And so for me to find new pistons, rings, all the stuff for the engine, before I even had a chance to tear it down and I was just gonna order parts blindly, I didn't really wanna do that. I really just wanted to like get the thing running. I bought a good running engine out of a 92 Mustang and I got the work. That's not how oil is supposed to look. I actually had to spend a lot of money to get this engine out. So a lot of people don't realize that all the little petty costs that go into building a car. Like for example, I didn't own an engine standard engine lift. Those are things I had to buy. So an, a stand and a lift from Harbor Freight cost me $142.82. I had to buy engine gaskets, a fuel pump, and a bunch of other odds and ends just to get this newer type engine running in the old one. That was $142.24. I put a bigger radiator in it because I was already taking the old one out. Might as well put a better one in it because it's gonna be a daily driver. That was $350.69. I had to buy a spacer for the fan so that it would uh, get far enough away from the serpentine pulleys on this car that it would actually fit. Uh, that spacer was $21.99. I needed to buy a dipstick and a bunch of other stuff to go in it. That was $150.38. A starter was $93.06. Fluids, belts, a bunch of other kind of stuff like that just to get the car like, you know, into a running order. Uh, that was $115.22. Uh, and then I bought a bunch of more gaskets because I had not gotten enough gaskets at that point, so I needed more gaskets. Uh, and that was $200.06. That was a lot of money, just in the first like two weeks of me owning the car. Ben was there the day that I first moved, it like moved forward, it lurched, and it was really cool. And at that point, it was technically a running car, um, which I always say like, the first thing you wanna do on project cars is just get it running. Screw everything else. Don't do any of the cosmetic stuff, don't order new wheels, just get the car running so you can drive it and enjoy it. Uh, sadly, uh, it wasn't very enjoyable. Uh, it shook like crazy and it didn't run well at all. I've tuned a few carburetors in my life and I could not get this carburetor the, to run right. Uh, and also the engine was just shaking like crazy. It was almost like I had a misfire or something, but it didn't. I didn't know what to do. I ended up taking the carburetor off my Mustang and putting it on the Ranchero just to see what would happen. The Holly carburetor I took off the Mustang ran perfect on the Ranchero. Uh, it was still shaking, but it was running really well. So 
I went on and bought the exact car that was on my Mustang. That was $436.46 from Holly. At that point, I had a pretty good running car, uh, and now it was time to just start doing all the little things. I really wanted to tackle the suspension in this car, so I bought new shocks. I think the springs were cut from before, so I had to buy new springs for the front, and then I had to buy new rear shocks. The rear shocks in this car weren't even connected when I looked under the car, which is crazy. I drove that car a bunch, and the shocks weren't even connected to the car. So the front shocks cost me $58.28, which is really cheap. The springs cost me $117 on the dot, and the rear shocks cost it $110.57. I ended up going with air shocks for the rear because I wanted to kind of match the style and what the old cars had. Plus, I'd be able to raise and lower the car with the more weight I put in the truck bed. After all the suspension was done, I took it for another drive, and I was still having that like crazy shake that I had been having since the beginning. I kind of had an epiphany. The flex plate that was on the car, I realized that there was an older and a newer version. There were 28 ounce and 50 ounce flex plates that could have come on these cars. And I took the older 28 ounce flex plate off of the old engine and put it on a new engine, which means the whole engine was just out of balance. I don't remember how it came to me, it just came to me randomly, but that meant the motor had to come out of the car once again, which sucked. Why it was out, I wanted to fix a couple things. Uh, the oil pickup and the dipstick were not in great locations, so I wanted to fix that. The flex plate ended up costing me $118.77 with the gaskets and everything I needed to basically take it off and put a whole new one on. The oil pan I bought cost me $425.40, with the pickup for that pan specifically costing $81.02. When the engine was out, I decided to get like like I said, another dipstick for it, and I started to get a hood release and a few other things I, I need to do on the car because I was making one big order. Uh, and I also need to get Thermactor plugs because the back of the heads of newer engines have little ports the exhaust comes out. So I had to plug those. Uh, that order was $156.40. I remember when I, everything got back in and I put that engine back in the car. I went and took it for that first drive since then. I was so freaking happy. That car ran so well. It was. I mean, I was, it was, it was awesome. The car ran great and I was just super excited. And I drove the car a couple times here and there just to like see what it was like. And, but I was still having little problems with the car and I had some electrical issues. It finally was time for me to then do some of the cosmetic stuff I wanted to do on this car and make it the car I wanted to make it. First thing I did is I purchased a tonneau cover for the car, which took a really long time to come in. That tonneau cover cost at $474.71. And then I also wanted the Rhino lie in the bed so it was nice and grippy and would protect it basically. That costed me $187 to buy that kit. Then it was time to do some headlights. I wanted to do something on the front. Uh, so it costed $146.20 to buy the new headlights that I got, these LED ones. I had also painted all of the trim parts on the car. Me and Ben took a day and basically just sanded them all down and painted them all black. I bought that, plus I bought a bunch of parts for the interior as I was gonna do the interior next. That cost $119.62. And as I transitioned to the interior, I ended up finding a lot of problems with it. I had a lot of wiring problems. It wasn't running at 12 volts, I was getting weird shorts. I had so many little problems with the car, I couldn't figure it out. And I had just ordered so much stuff. I had ordered the fan, some switches, I had ordered a steering wheel, that cost me $221.06. Door seals were $118.26. Luckily, the vinyl I used for the door cards on the car, I already actually had, so it didn't really cost me any money to do those. No idea what that vinyl cost me, but I've had it for a couple years, so I just used some of it for that project. The seat cover, ended up costing me $459.71, and it took a long time to come in, but I was really happy with how they came out. They look like brand new seats, so it was worth the price at the end of the day. It's just, it was expensive. Some more interior parts, turn signals, a thing on the steering column, a radio. That cost me $351.70 for all that. At this point, I had kind of fixed some of the wiring issues, some of the stuff that was going on, but not all of it. I then purchased CarPlay for the car. I bought like a screen that does CarPlay and Bluetooth and all that. That cost me $303.17. That is still not in the car yet. I have it. It just hasn't been put in the car yet because I haven't had time. It will happen very soon though. Uh, you can look out for that video and subscribe to uh, make sure you don't miss it. And then I had to replace the radio again because the original radio I bought wouldn't have gone with that CarPlay, so that cost me $97.46. At this point, then the interior was pretty much done. I also put a new dash cover on with all those parts. There was a lot of parts I bought for the car just to get it in a nice looking order. At that point, I tried driving it a couple times, 
and I realized my wiring problems really came back. And that's where this project kind of halted for a little bit is because I didn't know it was wrong. I was searching for busted wires. We spent multiple days just tearing stuff apart. I eventually ended up just tearing into the looms of the car and pulling the dash back off to then find all this stuff. I basically ended up tracing everything back to what was the Petronix box in the car, which is the ignition box. So knowing the ignition box was probably bad, I bought a new ignition box, I bought a coil, I bought some wires, and I got it all done up. That cost me $206.94 from Summit. I also figured out during that time that my alternator was never working. So I originally bought an alternator from the car in one of the first orders I made, and it wasn't working. So I had to spend another $171.99 to replace that because it was way out of warranty. And yeah, at that point, it was a great running car. It ran great, it started, it run. We got to go drive the car. So now the car was a good running car and everything was great. There was a little bit of petty cost of it, uh, just of tools and this and that and just random crap on the car. Uh, that all ended up costing $514.44, which is honestly a little less than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be more like grand, but hey, that's what it costed. Um, and then I was gonna wait for a while and not paint this car, but we had something come up for the car and it needed to get painted. So. Uh, I ended up going to Mako and getting it painted. I got like the median level Mako paint job and that ended up costing me $1,800, which isn't as bad as for like a super nice paint job, but as you can see, it looks really good. So I'm not really worried about it. Uh, it's dark shadow metallic gray from Ford. Uh, I love the color. Me and Ben did two days of really hard prep to get this car ready. Put Bondo on it and did a bunch of other stuff and looks really good. I'm happy with how it came out, truly. I'm not as happy with how much it costed me. <laughs> um, there's a lot of big numbers in there. Uh, the final cost of the car was $13,889.77. I spent just shy of 14 grand on this car. And that doesn't consider the thousands of hours of work we did on this car and the, you know, the days of being here, the gas of me driving back and forth to Ben's house all the time to get this thing done and Ben paying, if I could pay Ben to help me on all the days I needed help and all our friends to help build this car. Uh, basically everybody in our friend group at some point in time has helped me on this, whether it was pulling an engine or putting a tonneau cover on or anything I needed two hands for, I had a lot of help on it. and. I appreciate all that. This car is not completely done. Uh, there's a couple little things I gotta do to it. Uh, and it's always, you know, it's a project car. There's always th little things I'm gonna have to put into it, but at the end of the day, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Uh, and you know what? For a price of just under 14K, yeah, I think it's worth 14K. I think it's worth well more than that. So if you haven't watched all the videos for the Ranchero, uh, we'd really appreciate the playlist is over here. Uh, you should definitely watch all of the videos. Uh, They're really fun and you don't, this is just a glimpse of what we had to do on the car. Uh, the actual video is a lot longer and you get to see all the little knickknacks and stuff that we did throughout the video. If you like all these again, please subscribe. We really appreciate it.